So yesterday I had the opportunity to play the brand new Uncanny X-Men LE machine that just arrived at Perfect Tilt Pinball here in Springfield, Missouri. And if you're not aware, this place is the absolute premier place to play pinball in the area. Uh, the owner, Brandon, I've watched him assemble this place since it was just nothing, uh, you know, bare studs and walls and renovate it. And he put a ton of hard work and effort into this. He's got an amazing collection, lots of premium LE machines from Stern. He's got Chicago Gaming, he's got Jersey Jack, you name it. Uh, great place, you can get a bite to eat. I mean, it's just a phenomenal collection of games. Uh, you can do hourly, you can do daily, you can even do monthly memberships so you can play to your heart's desire is fully content. And he just recently got in the X-Men LE this week. And of course, me being an X-Men nerd and a pinball fan, I had to play it. Uh, and I thought I'd share my thoughts and opinions, my first impressions of the uncanny X-Men from Stern Pinball. First and foremost, we gotta talk about the artwork on this machine. It was designed by Jeremy Packer, AKA Zombie Yeti. Uh, I've made no secrets on this channel about my love for his artwork. I just, I'm a big fan of it in general and there's really nothing he's put out that I've disliked to this date. Uh, he has a naturally kind of cartoony comic style to his art as just naturally that's his kind of vibe and his aesthetic. So it blends well with the X-Men and the comic book, you know, license of this uh, pinball machine. So it's a, it's a natural fit here. Uh, just from top to bottom, this is a gorgeous machine, the LE specifically, but I mean the Pro and the Premium, this is one of those machines uh, where I can specifically say there's not a bad one in the bunch. A lot of times, you know, there'll be a standout, whether it be Pro or Premium or LE, one of them is always just so much better than the rest, but in this case, I think all three of them are beautiful machines. Uh, this LE specifically has, you know, gorgeous foil kind of side inner art blades I was really impressed with. The, the play field itself, of course, is gorgeous. You got every major villain and hero you can think of from the X-Men world. Uh, little, you know, nuanced characters hidden behind here and underneath here. Uh, you really got to spend some time just kind of examining the play field to really see and, you know, discover all the hidden little gems that he's put there in the artwork. And when it comes to the animation, I think they did a great job here. Uh, all the characters that are represented and animated, they look the part, they look like their characters. There's no really bad designs or anything that jumped out at me is like, why does that character look like that? Uh, kind of talking, talking about uh, you, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and April O'Neil, she just had an absolutely horrendous uh, animation on that game. Uh, luckily, all the characters I saw in my time playing the X-Men here, uh, they all looked the part, they didn't look like dollar store variations of them. So my hat's off to the, the design and animation team because you guys did a great job there. Next up, let's go ahead and talk about shots and layout because Jack Danger designed this game to be very unique and you know, tip of the cap to him because he's keeping pinball interesting. He's trying to innovate as much as possible. Obviously, over years and years of pinball being around, designs kind of get stale and stagnant and there's only so much you can do, but he keeps kind of trying to reinvent the wheel and you know, keeping pinball weird as he likes to say. And I think he's doing a good job of it. First thing you're gonna notice is the offset flippers. Uh, when I first saw this cabinet and the announcement video and everything, I was like, hmm, is this gonna bother me playing it? Am I gonna have to like, you know, get a new headspace to try to uh, learn how to play this game since the flippers are adjusted slightly to the right? But I can tell you the very first plunge right out of the get go, I didn't even notice it. You just feel like you're playing normal pinball. Aesthetically, yeah, you'll look down and you'll say, oh wow, those flippers are you know, marginally pushed off to the right. But while, while you're in the middle of the gameplay, you don't notice it at all. And one thing I noticed specifically on this machine, it's just kind of like Foo Fighters. Jack Danger made uh, notice of this and mention of this in interviews where he talked about having a lot of attention to detail where as far as uh, ricochets and you know geometry of where things would hit and fall off and roll off into placement and it's very apparent while you're playing this game that that same level of detail is went into this game uh every little ricochet every little nuance bounce uh you can tell there was thought put into where will the ball roll from where will it hit where will it glide where will it slide uh, and it almost makes you feel like a better player than you really are because even if you brick a shot It'll bounce around and it'll go somewhere and maybe opens up another opportunity for a different shot as opposed to just being a brick and a drain and a brick and a drain. And then on the play field, we get two pop bumpers and on the left side, we are missing a sling. It's kind of replaced with the, the pop bumper being moved up higher, but instead of a slingshot, we get a little C cutout that has a post in it, a couple of targets behind it, and it you know provides a, a kind of unique uh, playing style. It really has to make you as the player more aware of what you're doing on that left side. You're not gonna be doing post passes and how you cradle and catch the ball is gonna be so much different because as the ball comes down and kind of hits that C, it naturally kind of scoops and shoots it back out towards the right side. So you're gonna have to kind of adjust your playing style when doing that, but 
I really enjoyed it. It's not like Rick and Morty where they replace the slingshot with a pop bumper. Uh, like I said, that pop bumper is a little higher, so it's less uh, dangerous, it's less invasive. You don't feel like you're just gonna magically hit a ball, just hit that pop bumper and shoot straight down the middle. This does have a center post. Uh, it does have a standard flipper gap, so it is nice that we do have that center post, but you will have to train your brain to trust the center post. I found myself using it more often than not when the right-handed side of the Sentinel would push down and break the, the, the bridge, so to speak, and the ball would almost always go straight down the middle every single time that happens. So I was uh, praising the fact that they put a center post here on that game for that specific reason, because this current edition that I was playing, the way it was set up and everything, every time that bridge came down, that ball was going straight down the middle. So that center post was a lifesaver. One of the biggest cool things about the shots and layout though, of course, is the danger room located to the left side of the play field. Uh, very unique little out lane spinner scooping, a uh, little mini ramp and a target combo over there. High risk, high reward is how they advertise it. Uh, it does add a whole nother complexity to multi-ball because you'll get three balls shooting around, four balls sometimes, and then you'll get one over there in the danger room and while you're trying to focus on keeping the other balls in play or maybe lining up a shot, you don't want to lose this because if you don't keep the ball either looping around or on top of that ramp in the danger room, it's gonna drain and the ball's gonna be out and then you lose that one completely. So it's very cool. It fits the theme, of course, with X-Men, with the danger room. Uh, it adds some kind of franticness and really kind of gets your blood pressure and your heart rate going, which is really fun. Uh, and you know, Jack Danger's been threatening for years that he's gonna put Outland spinners in a game and by God he did it and he did it in a way that's you know not really intrusive of normal gameplay. So another great little innovative way to uh, keep pinball weird. So great job there, Jack. So there were two really standout shots to me that were super satisfying once I hit them. Uh, I think Stern is calling this the double turnaround downtown shot. It's in the back left corner, comes around, kind of does this kind of squirrely figure eight thing. When you hit it and you hit it smoothly, it looks and it feels so, just so amazing to see it go woo woo. It's almost kind of like a, you know, a Lethal Weapon 3 or a Godzilla with the, the spinning ramps, only it's more compact and it goes around so much faster. Very, very cool aesthetic. Uh, we were calling it the loop-de-loo shot. Like I said, Stern's got an official name for it, but it's just really cool, really satisfying to see it swinging around and going in that uh, circular pattern very quickly. And the next one is the X-Jet crossover ramp so this would be kind of in the middle of the play field on the left side you shoot around it makes a hard kind of 90 degree comes around again i was naturally just so trained to so many games coming around where the ball will you know feed back to a flipper i kept naturally wanting to hold my left flipper up and in doing so i would unfortunately end up draining the ball because as that ball comes around uh, the wire form that's behind your flippers it feeds it to the danger room flipper the little mini one and if you're holding it up it's just going to hit the tip of that flipper and drain instantly. So after about two mistakes of doing that, I'd finally train my brain, hey, once it goes around that X-Jet crossover shot, uh, don't hold your flipper at all. Make sure that left flipper is down so it goes up into the danger room and then you can start actively firing it around. But both of those shots, once you hit them cleanly, they feel super cool and they're you know new unique shots to pinball as far as I'm concerned. And I, I love the heck out of them. Toys and mechs on this machine we have that are unique to the premium and the LE versus the Pro. Um, so we have a, a sculpted Wolverine toy in the back left hand corner where he's getting you know thrown like a fastball by Colossus, which is straight out of the comic books if you're not aware. Uh, the main centrical uh, view toy, bash toy, is the Sentinel head, which is very, very cool. Uh, right on brand with, you know, X-Men of course. It has a very cool, you know, pinball moment. You know, you hit him a couple of times on the top of the head and he rises up from the play field. And it really has that just kind of, oh no, impending boss battle type of feel to it. And again, it's on brand with the X-Men. You know, a lot of times during the cartoon series and in the comics, you saw the, the Sentinels coming up out of the ground in silos and things like that. So it feels cool. I love the aesthetic of it. It has that cell shaded artwork. So kind of goes hand in hand with that old uh, cartoon. A lot of us probably grew up with the X-Men animated series in the 1990s and of course there's the revitalized variation of it now on Disney Plus with the X-Men 97. So all this artwork kind of feels on brand with that X-Men animated series that we all know and love. Rude! Of course we have the hands. So on the right hand uh, he'll bash the wire form breaks it open and changes the trajectory of the ball. On uh, the left hand, his finger will come up sometimes and push the ball back and fire it back at you. These look cool, and uh, again, they tie in great with the theme. Uh, 
do they necessarily add anything to gameplay? Me personally, I didn't feel it. Like I said, they're cool to look at and everything, but I didn't feel they're just absolutely necessary parts of the machine. I saw the, the right hand wire form activated way more than I ever saw the you know individual like kind of toss back finger on the left hand side. Uh, so that one was almost kind of an afterthought to me. Yeah, it was there, but a lot of times if I didn't even hit the shot cleanly, it would come up that ramp and it would roll right back down. So it was almost identical experience as if it was going to send it back with the finger. So in reality, that wasn't, you know, a big win for me. Like I said, aesthetically, they look cool. Uh, I like the sculpt details on them. Uh, I like the interaction and everything. It just didn't necessarily add a whole ton to the gameplay experience because like I said earlier, every time that wire form was coming down with a hand, it was shooting it straight down the middle. Uh, that was alarming. The other uh, thing they have there is the Beast Very Target Captive Ball or whatever they're calling it. Basically, it's a raised platform Captive Ball. Maybe it's coding issues or whatever, but to me, it was just another kind of afterthought every time. I would bash it and it would just kind of, you know, tinker back and forth and I never really saw a lot of success or, you know, things coming in the gameplay from me bashing that repetitively that uh, really made it worthwhile. A lot of times I was just hitting it because I was misaligning my shots on the left and it was just kind of like dink dunk and, you know, things would go on. It just didn't feel like a, uh, a really cool premium feature that I was excited that, you know, I, I paid extra for or anything like that if I was uh, the owner of this machine. In fact, I think the pro model with its kind of leaper targets is aesthetically more satisfying to me to hit and see, you know, things pop up versus this kind of little teeter-totter back and forth. Uh, but to each throne. So sound and music, first of all, I was super giddy to hear kind of the little opening riff from the X-Men animated series from the 90s is included. Uh, I didn't hear the entire song by any means. It's just kind of little riffs here and there that -na 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 -na, that we're all familiar with. Uh, little inclusions like that just, you know, put a nice little bow on this package to me. Uh, a lot of the call outs were great. Like I said, I'm brain trained to all these X-Men animated uh, voice actors from the 90s and even the 97 uh, reiteration here. Uh, obviously, it would have been amazing if they could have brought all those actors in here, but I, I get it for monetary reasons that would have blown up, uh, you know, unnecessary expenditures on Stern's behalf, so I get why they didn't do that. But the voice actors they have here doing callouts uh, are kind of on brand with all the characters. The only one that kind of stood out to me as being off uh, was Gambit. And uh, again, like I said, I'm, I'm trained to hearing a certain a Gambit-esque voice from the cartoon, so that's always what I'm gonna assimilate hearing uh, when I think of Gambit, and this one is just so far removed from that one that it, it, it sticks out to me. Is it bad? By any means, not really. It, he does a good job with it, but it just it's so different than what I'm used to that it, it immediately kind of took me out of the experience. I was like, wait a minute, what is going on with that voice? So the shots and layout I thought were great. Artwork is great, sound. Uh, animation package they all did a great job uh, the biggest weakness as i see it right now is just the code um, i think right now it's at like 0.87 maybe 0.83 i can't remember but it's in that area um, it obviously has some more cooking in the kitchen to do right now i think i saw maybe nine playable modes while i was um, you know jamming on this machine uh, they are selectable which is really cool so you don't have to worry about you know repetitiveness of grinding through the same mode over and over and over again so if you've got a mode that you don't really like you can kind of skip around and avoid it um, but overall like it was just kind of like the bare bones like you got your modes uh, to keep you entertained for a while but it, it's definitely by no means uh, the complete package Typically Stern has kind of been taking about a year to fully flesh out their code releases to where we get to that 1.0 and you get all your built-in mini wizard modes and your main wizard mode, things like that. Uh, right now, this will keep owners and you know early buyers entertained for a while. You, you're not gonna deal with this kind of skeleton machine, but it definitely needs more of the total package. It has um, great lighting effects. There's a moment where you get sent to the future and the playfield dims where it's dark and you got the animation on the, the back glass there. Uh, everything's desolate and you know run down. So little code tweaks there really you know add to that pinball play experience. But overall, this is definitely the part that is the weakest of the machine. Like I said, uh, the sh shots are great aesthetically. I think uh, the artwork is phenomenal. Uh, just overall design is great job. So to wrap it up, they just need to you know cook that code longer in the kitchen. Give us some more. Uh, more modes, tie the modes together, you know, here's some more of these call outs that I'm sure that have all been recorded and uh, it'll be a much more cohesive experience. 
because uh, right now it's a little bit disjointed. You don't really have that sense of Days of Future Past, which this is uh, loosely based on. You see little hints of it here and there, but in reality, you don't see the, the cohesive tie of that storyline as you're playing uh, at all. So hopefully, you know, as the time progresses, we'll get more code updates sooner than later, and it'll, you know, put a nice bow on this package. But guys, let me know your thoughts and opinions. What do you think of the Uncanny X-Men pinball machine from Stern Pinball? Have you played it? Are you gonna play it? Are you excited? Is this not for you? Are you waiting until the next release? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button. Share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. It really means a lot. <laughs>